Hi, welcome to Nishcraft. My name is Cassie and I'm your host and today I am going to flip through Crochet Stitch Dictionary 200 Essential Stitches with Step-by-Step -step Photos by Sarah Hazel with you guys. Just wanted to share with you what this book looks like and what it has in it. Now this book is um, one that I've used as a reference for different stitches that I have taught on the channel before. Um, the most recent one I used for the Magic Memory Afghan crochet along and I figured that since I had not done a flip through of this and I may as well do it. Um, I do want to say that because of copyright reasons I do not want to zoom in too close but I will zoom in for certain patterns if I have something to say about it that I think is important okay. Um, so the crochet stitch dictionary it, I have the paperback one. This is bound with a very sturdy cover and um, even the pages are very sturdy. So this is one of those books that I don't worry about, um, you, you know, tearing or messing up the pages or, or anything like that. Um, so it is well made. It also has a lot of very basic stitches. So this is ideal for a beginner. And another thing about this crochet stitch dictionary is that it is... It comes up a lot on Amazon as a recommended book and so I wanted to flip through it for that too. That way you can see what you'd be purchasing if you were to get this, okay? So just to inform that purchasing decision. All right guys, so um, I'm just gonna open up here and we see some of the art here. So the table of contents is the first thing to really take note of. Um, I really like that it's visual. I think that that's helpful, especially if you're thinking about, at least for me, I know that sometimes I'm thinking about a specific stitch, but I don't know the name of it. And that, that has roots in the fact that different people call stitches different things. And I try to be informative about what the stitch is that I'm using, but sometimes it'll come up that somebody calls it one thing or the other and and it can be difficult, you know, especially throughout different countries, I've found. So being able to visualize what you're looking for can help. And so again, this has 200 different pat stitch patterns and it get it has a getting started section where it goes through equipment and materials, um, crochet skills, basic stitches, and stitch variations. Now this is basically just telling you how to hold a crochet hook and giving diagrams of how to make basic stitches. Um, every single one of these patterns though does have a diagram with it. Um, not only a visual representation of somebody making the stitch, but also a di like an actual diagram um, that is found in um, the diagram patterns that you might see. So here's just a, a sample page of how to read each stitch, you know, telling us where the the name of the stitch is, the symbol charts, and what it looks like, and you know, the different steps, and you know, that kind of stuff. So, so it does show you how to do that. And then in the getting started section, like I said, um, you know, we've got basically different hook sizes different yarn weights and uh, she, she does not go through different yarn materials though um, like for example acrylic, silk, nylon, etc. She doesn't go through that but she does have the yarn weights. Um, you know typical accessories um, I do see that she has these pins that are used for blocking on blocking boards so um, I know that that can be helpful and again you know just how to hold the crochet hook, how to create a slip knot and chain, and um, what a single, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, what a turning chain is for each one of the different um, different stitches is, and, and uh, even how to sew together um, in multiple ways of sewing together, which can be helpful if you are starting out and you're wanting to make like a granny square blanket. Um, granny square blankets are very easy to make, but then when it comes to sewing them together, that can be a little bit um, frustrating if if one doesn't know how to do it and there's all these different ways and and she's showing how to use a needle and also how to use a hook to do that um, she even talks about changing color not only at the ends but also like mid row and that kind of thing which I think is th you know, I think that that's important learning how to join yarn measuring for gauge again basic stitches um, and cluster stitches basically basically how to make a cluster a puff a bobble and a popcorn um, which are which are all basically 
crocheting together, crocheting stitches together, but in different ways. And she even has a, the bouillon stitch, um, which I have not seen, I don't think, very many books that give instructions on how to make that. So that's kind of cool. So here's the directory of stitches. Um, something that I've noticed that might be a little redundant, or maybe not, is that while she has the, um, the diagrams here, the illustrations for basic stitches, like single crochet, um, slip stitch, um, and, and half double crochet, etc. Um, when we get to the directory of stitches, she does it again. So here's the single crochet again. So I think that that's kind of, um, I guess it's important to know um, what you're getting when you know that, you know, there, it's going, there are some places where it's a little redundant, but I think that that can help for people who are just starting out learning okay so i don't necessarily find that a negative point um it's just when somebody is a little bit more advanced um it it just is repeating the same kind the same kind of information and that can be um, a little tedious for those of us who already know the basics now i just want to and i'm going to zoom in oops went the other way uh, I'm just going to zoom into this place. At the bottom of every single stitch, she does have these these diagrams, okay? And I think that this is a really nice, gentle way to learn how to read um, these, uh, I think she, she had a picture of it in the very beginning. Yeah, how to read these symbol charts. Um, sometimes people will publish symbol charts and... Um, if you don't know what those symbols mean, then you can't read them. And um, so if you are able to kind of go to each stitch and gradually learn what the different symbols mean, um, then it can be, you know, this can be a very great teaching tool for that. So there's maybe a less, um, I mean, that's just the way that I look at it personally. So it, I was just going to say that maybe is a less obvious way of using this book um, to help learn different, uh, different things. So again, we've got, you know, all of these just very basic stitches, half double, double, treble, um, and uh, staggered half double, paired half double, paired single. And these are all just different ways of making the same stitch, um, but placing them in different places um, on, <laughs> placing them in different places and using loops in different ways to pull off those stitches. So um, these are very important to know, I think. Um, for a beginner because it gives it gives more creative ease with how to plan projects especially if a beginner is really interested in design um, but it is not but like I said it can be kind of redundant for those of us who already know this stuff so you know we've got the waddle stitch and, and again all of these are just very um, standard stitches. I'm just gonna say a couple of the names so that you know what kinds of stitches that she is um, including in here. We've got the spider stitch, the woven stitch, the sedge stitch. She calls this the waffle stitch. Now I identify the waffle as a different stitch than this um, but that's what she's calling that and and again this is this is a really great example of how sometimes stitches are called different things by different people. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, it has to do with the way that they have learned and um, the way that they have been taught themselves, you know. Um, so yeah, the way that they've been taught and also the culture surrounding them, okay? Because, you know, I think about the waffle stitch and I think of a big Belgium waffle <laughs> looking stitch, right? So we've got the floré. This is called the crunch stitch, the sieve stitch, the grit stitch. You know, I, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna be kind of <laughs> firing off all of these names, but it, it's just so that you guys know what kinds of stitches are included. We've got the moss stitch, the berry stitch. This berry stitch is very much like a um, like a puff stitch. Um, and then we've got the uneven berry. So when she's talking about even and uneven, she's talking about whether or not they're stacked up on top of each other or if they're staggered. Um, so that's that's another way of saying that. So sometimes you will see stitches described as staggered. Um, they just mean that they're not stacked up on top of each other in the pattern. So <laughs> there are a lot of variations on the V stitch and she covers them all here. Um, so we have the half double V, the double V, three and two, twin V. Uh, it, they just kind of go on and on, but I mean, it will def definitely tell you 
uh, that's a really, in fact, that's a really great way of putting it. it. It teaches you a stitch and then it teaches you all these different variations on the stitch. And what's great about that is that when a person is learning how to crochet and they start learning by learning a stitch and then learning all the variations, then when they learn a new stitch that may, might not be in this book, they're also able to make those variations themselves because it just comes intuitively. So that's a really positive part of this book is that it does do that. So here's um, the Trinity stitch, the Pike stick. She calls this the wide checker stitch. Um, it's, it's not a basket weave stitch. It looks similar, but it's not. Um, but, you know, that's just another one. It, it basically, it alternates the um, um, single crochet with the, with the double crochet. And it creates this pattern that I don't know if you can see it well. Yeah, you, you should be able to see it. I'm looking in my camera right here. Um, it kind of shows this kind of optical illusion there of having checkers on it. So here we have the herringbone half double, the herringbone double, the linked half bubble, and the silt stitch. I think I might have actually said the linked half half bubble. So <laughs> just, just bear with me here. <laughs> so we have this one. It's called the granule um, stitch, and it's really used making picots. Um, but I like that she calls it this. I have used this stitch before in a blanket. And it came out really, really well, but I only used it every 10 rows because I just wanted something that had a little bit of texture every so often. Um, and I really appreciate this granule stitch. I've, I've not seen it in any other book except for this one, um, but I have seen it in um, a YouTube tutorial before. So um, this is a page that I'm kind of... Uh, happy happy about i really like these scallop stitches um so we have these closed scallops the open scallops and then the peacocks um, which i think that all of these are very beautiful so that's why i zoomed in on that i would really like to um do i would really like to do some tutorials on these i'm, I'm actually kind of thinking thinking about that as I'm flipping through this like these would be really good tutorials to do so just know that I that I've got that in my mind um so we've got this fantail stitch this is one of my favorite stitches here um I think it's absolutely beautiful and elegant and I found that the red heart ombre really works up well in this this is a kind of stitch where the stitch does the talking not necessarily the color but when you have something that gradually changes colors and it's not an abrupt change the way that the red heart ombre does then um you're able to create this really beautiful um piece of work that combines slight color variations and um, also brings out that stitch. So if you want to look for a tutorial with this stitch that I have on my channel, I have um, the Sunny Funshine Blanket is made with this stitch. So here is a similar stitch called the Dock and Leaf Stitch. It just has some more open work in it. This um, Picot fan is deceptively very easy. Um, it's just about um, making double crochets and then making a double crochet um, and chaining one and a double crochet and then making a Picot <laughs> and, and on and on. And so that's how, that's how this is made. Um, it's, like I said, it's deceptively simple because it looks so complicated, but it's actually not, not very. Um, so her having this stitch closer to the beginning of the book actually shows that she's um, got the design ideas out that she knows that she can very easily teach beginners how to do things that look really fancy um, just by teaching a few um, basic um, ideas and I think that that's a that's a really good way of organizing um, stitches so we've got this open shell in pico and then a pico ridge uh, every single thing on this page I love so I'm gonna zoom in again for these so we have this rope stitch very it's it's nice and um, simple and dainty I really love that it's just such a simple stitch um, I think that this would be good for um, baby blankets. And then we have the iris stitch. Now I have a tutorial for the iris stitch on my channel. Um, we have the sprig stitch, which is kind of like a, it almost looks like a tighter iris stitch to me. 
And then we have this blossom stitch, um, which I absolutely love. I have not done a tutorial on the blossom stitch either, but again, getting ideas while I'm watching, while I'm flipping through this with you. Um, so we have this, it's called strawberry lace. Now it's interesting because I've heard of pineapple lace, but I haven't, um, I, I can't remember hearing about strawberry lace the way that I've heard about pineapple lace. I think I've heard of it before, but just not as much. Um, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty pattern. And then we have the crow's foot lattice. So here are some linked shell stitches in the block and off, offset shell. The shells here are going um, kind of back and forth. It's really, um, <laughs> it's <laughs> I want to call it a really asymmetric. <laughs> stitch um but i mean it, it's it's pretty it's just i don't think that i'd i'd ever actually use this so here's a shell network so it looks like it's like nets with shells in them which i kind of i kind of like that um and then she's calling this a rack so so here's another open fan that is another very deceptively easy stitch um and interlocking shells now this interlocking shell stitch is a lot more um is a lot more tight than some of the interlocking shell stitches that I've um, practiced with. But I, I have used this one before and it works up really good, especially for some reason in bright colors. I've noticed that bright colors really shine when I use these, these kinds of stitches. So here we have some um, pretty standard stitches in the crochet community. We've got this arcade. An arcade is kind of like a trellis stitch, only it's got curves on it. We've got this boxed shell and this, it's called an acrobatic stitch is what she's calling it. Um, we've got the tulip stitch here. This is also a very um, popular stitch in crochet and diagonal shells. Is a fan and V stitch. In fact, you know what? I think it's a fan and V stitch that I did the, um, sunny funshine blanket in if you just kind of look closer in that yep it is that's the one that i did it with so yeah the sunny funshine blanket is used with red heart ombre in a yellow it's called sunshine um or yeah i think it's called sunshine or sunny and anyway i um i do have a tutorial for this one sorry i i had gotten it mixed up with one from before i just want to look at it so i can see the difference so i know where i made the mistake so yeah so i saw the fans in the diagonals and i uh, so this is called a fan tail this is the fan and v stitch that i taught um yeah really pretty both of them are pretty <laughs> so let me go ahead and zoom out so you can see both sides so here's a starburst stitch it's very similar to a catherine wheel only it has this um, kind of diamonds around it um and a pedal stitch. And now I'm used to the pedal stitches being all the way around. And then the next pedal, like the next color being the next flower is all the way around. But this is definitely a valid way to make it. Um, different people use different kinds of color work in their stitches. So um, the same stitch can look a little bit different sometimes um, as a result of that. So here's a hexagon stitch, also very similar to the starburst stitch. Um, and next we have the Catherine wheel. This is a very iconic stitch in crochet. Um, it's very hard to make this um, even for me, I've, I've noticed. Um, and, and, and by that I mean like for the circles to be exactly circle around one another. Um, it's always very hard to do that. And I've seen, I've not seen a crocheter yet. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that they exist who is able to make this look really symmetrical, um, before. And I, and I don't know if that's just a design element of it where it's not supposed to look symmetrical, kind of like it's supposed to, it's supposed to look like it's handmade the way that uh, some people put eggshells in cake slices so that people know it's <laughs> and it's homemade, you know? Um, so I don't know if it's that or if it's just because there's not a way to make a perfect circle, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I just know that the Catherine wheel stitch is one that um, I have issues making even. So now we have some different cluster stitches. So this is the Align Double Clusters uh, Peak Stitch, um, Alternate Double Clusters. And again, the Aligned versus the Alternate has to do with um, Stacked versus Staggered, for those of you who are more familiar with those 
term. So we've got large clusters, um, fork clusters, twin clusters. This is an extended fork cluster. Um, and so here we have some more clusters. I mean, it looks like she's just got a whole whole lot of these clusters all next to each other because once you learn one, you're able to, to conceptualize all of the other ones. So we have this lace clusters, which is really interesting. Um, and then this honeycomb. Now I am used to um, a different style being called the honeycomb style stitch um but but again this is this is what she's decided is called the honeycomb stitch which is totally fine um and i mean i don't know if if other people consider this the honeycomb stitch as well because i think the other one has another word after it in fact i think it's in this book and we'll find out so <laughs> it's, it's like there'll be a surprise ending and we'll find out so here's a, a ball stitch and a pineapple cluster um, raised pineapple clusters, bead stitches, box beads, and, and this bead structure has like a bouillon type thing where, where you wrap the you you wrap the yarn around the stitch. So it's a yarn eater. Um, but I know that a lot of people want like a lot of people use this stitch more um, for like bracelets and um, other accessories like that rather than necessarily for blankets. So Here's another bouillon. This one she's actually calling the bouillon, and it's definitely that. <laughs> so we have this, um, these, what she's calling spots, and they're basically just clusters that um, have some space around them. I was thinking about doing this um, spot one for the Magic Memory Afghan crochet along. I still haven't done, um, I still haven't put out videos five six seven and eight yet and i was thinking that this one might be one of those but i have not deci decided definitively yet so <laughs> okay so alternate popcorns paired popcorns really like the way these paired popcorns look especially as a design element we've got raised popcorns um, and then these are more um, open work obviously global connection and zigzag so we have a zigzag lozenge crown puff lattice that's <laughs> this is getting like kind of complicated for me you know as i'm looking at it um, so we've got these mixed clusters aligned puffs <laughs> she calls this blackberry salad that sounds like uh that sounds like a stitch that that's uh one of those that have been handed down through the ages we uh so she calls this one pebbled lace she calls this one popcorn waffle I like that. And here's the Marguerite Stitch and the Five Star Marguerite Stitch. Now, I believe that the Five Star Marguerite Stitch is also called the Star Stitch um, lately, or if it's not, the stitch is very, very similar. Um, so, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a pretty nice stitch. And we've got alternate spikes. Here's um, the basket stitch. Um, understand this is not the basket weave stitch. It's a basket stitch. And um, what makes it the basket stitch? I'm just holding it up here is that they've got here i'll just zoom in i can't, can't do that what am i what am i trying to do here so yeah if you zoom in here you can see that there's a basket stitch what makes it what makes it itself is that it's got these little v's in these staggered places here so i know that that little detail might be kind of hard to see with me um, zoomed out the way that I am. So I just wanted to make sure that you were able to see that um, a little bit closer. So she's calling this the, the small daisy. This is a spiked boxes. She's calling this the brick stitch. I'm used to calling this that she's calling brick word the brick stitch, um, which obviously involves two colors. But it's interesting. This so this stitch does not in, involve actually um, crocheting like with two different colors at once. You make a line of green first in this in this um, color coordination, and then you make a line of of um, yellow, and then you go back to green, and then you you do these stitches over the yellow right here. So that's how that brickwork is is made. So it's it's very very similar to mosaic crochet for those of you who are familiar with that method. So we have these outline squares. We have this these double crosses um, which is a nice which is a nice design element. I, I think that, that would look good on a baby blanket. 
um, the rake stitch and the eyelash stitch. There's something, I don't know why, but for some reason the eyelash stitch kind of freaks me out, but I don't have a really good reason why. It just, I look at it and it, and it feels uncomfortable to my eyes. <laughs> like it gives me anxiety. <laughs> I know that's so weird. So this is called a bird, bird's foot spike. Um, this one, she's calling the mirror stitch. Um, I think that um, Bag O'Day has a tutorial on this that she calls the bear claw. Um, it might be that, that these um, things that come down is actually on, on one side instead of right in the middle. But it's a similar technique as, as that one. So, let's see here. So here's the caterpillar stripe. This is um, pretty iconic as well. I personally don't like it, <laughs> but it is an iconic one um, to, to um, learn. And the spike squares, which is giving me a headache. <laughs> oh, nice white, <laughs> simple um, textured stitches with the front raised double, the back raised double, the raised double ridges, the raised double rib. And then we've got the basket weave. This is one that I have on my channel um, for the Magic Memory Afghan. And if you want a tutorial on that, you can um, check out that one. You don't have to make the whole afghan. <laughs> you can just learn it there. <laughs> then we have this. It's called the Diagonal Raised Double. It's a very, it's, it's a more muted textured stitch. We've got this raised ripple, which to me looks a lot like um, the Alpine stitch. It's not the alpine stitch but it looks a lot like the alpine stitch and then she's calling this the raised brick we've got the corded ridge the crinkle stitch and the crossed ripple stitch and this is the reason why i'm even doing the flip through because my last um, magic memory afghan video was for the cross ripple stitch and i used this book and I said, you know, hey, I'll, I'll leave a link <laughs> to my flip through of the book, but apparently I hadn't done a flip through. So here's me doing a flip through. This one's um, an interesting one. I, I, uh, I think if I, yeah, if I hold it up, you can see it better. Since it's made in the same color, it's a little bit difficult to see that raised arch there. It kind of gets lost a little bit, but uh, that's, that's an interesting stitch. <laughs> So this dots and diamond stitch is really, really pretty. And I really did, I considered um, putting this in my textured um, Afghan, Magic Memory Afghan, but I decided that this was a little bit too complicated for that. I wanted to keep it a little bit um, easier. This one does in, involve treble cro crochets. And um, I just, I just didn't want to have treble crochets in my, in my magic memory Afghan. I mean, that's, that's the best reason I can explain. These relief squares we saw at the very beginning of the book when we saw the diagram of how to um, read the whole page and, and all of that. And sure enough, we have this, you know, very detailed, um, uh, I can't remember what it's called, S symbol. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna so keep this in. Um, a symbol diagram. <laughs> I can't think of what they're called right now, <laughs> but we have it, <laughs> as well as the, um, as well as the um, visual aids there and the description. I just, I just love that it has all of that there. And even on the bottom, they have each part, the visual aids for each part too. So here is the thistle stitch. Here is um, a cable stitch, which is really nice. I think that cabling in crochet can be really, really beautiful. Um, and you can actually do some things in crochet um, with cabling that might seem like you can only do with knitting, but, but there are techniques to, to use to make cables that are just as stunning, um, especially in Irish crochet. So if you ever want to learn more about cabling, um, before I put out some videos myself, um, I would say to look in Irish crochet um, for that. So here we have some chain loops and then the kind of like the dropped loop there. And we've got some meshes. So we've got um, a small and a large mesh, a firm mesh. Um, so this would be something that's just basically would be very sturdy. That's what, I, that's what it means. The arch mesh, this is 
probably the, it's very similar to a trellis stitch. And I have one of those on the channel. We've got this Pico arch mesh um, here in the crazy <laughs> Pico mesh. I like the crazy Pico mesh. I think that's pretty. I think that it would be pretty to make this in green like vines and then attach flowers every so often on it so that it looks like um, a trellis. <laughs> So, so these are, these are a bunch of Pico. So we've got, this one's called the Fancy Pico. This is a single Pico string network. <laughs> so, um, and then we have the ridged string network, offset fillet net, the ladder, and the bar and lattice. Oh man, look at this. This is pretty cool. It's, it's got triangles everywhere. I think that that's, um, I think that that's cool with the, um, I was going to say geography, but I meant geom geometry. This, I like the geometry there. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm seriously, I'm having a great day. I'm, I'm totally fine. It's just in the morning and I haven't had a full cup of coffee. I just wanted to get this. I wanted to look at this um, with you guys this morning. So we've got the ruled lattice stitch, doubled lattice, a zigzag, double string network. <laughs> so this, okay, we've got the honeycomb trellis. This is what I'm used to seeing as named the honeycomb stitch. Um, so she's calling it the honeycomb trellis. And then this um, mesh stitch, she's calling it the honeycomb mesh. Now what I've learned is that this is called the tr like a, a, a trellis stitch, like a simple trellis, trellis stitch. So um, it's, it's kind of interesting to see how different people name different things. So um, if you ever see... Um, a discrepancy between two people who are teaching a tutorial or two people who are um, talking about the same stitch but they're calling it different things typically it's it's come from somewhere like that and when I do my tutorials I try to include all of the alternate names that it's called in the description um, but sometimes I don't know so yeah now this shell trellis is actually a really great um, pattern to use for a um, small tablecloth. I have some in tablecloths that I've made from this. Um, very, it's a very um, nice dainty stitch. If if you don't do doilies, of course. Um, so we've got more trellis stitches. So we've got a puff cluster trellis, a pico lattice, a triple B code V. <laughs> Solomon's knot. And this is a really interesting stitch to learn. Um, there are different techniques in making these bigger loops. Um, one technique I've seen actually uses um, your thumb um, as a guide to make that, um, that big loop so that you are able to make the same size in between each one of them. Um, so it's a really, um, it's, it's a really unique stitch um, to make because of that. There's not a, um, I guess there's not a standard gauge for it is what I'm trying to say. Um, now, she might have a way of gauging it that's better um, than just using a thumb. I haven't looked at the pattern, <laughs> but I just, you know, just trying to explain that. So we, here we've got um, a similar one called Solomon's Grid. We've got fillet squares, and I think it's interesting. I think it, and important to learn how to um, read these kinds of charts that have, um, you know, the pattern. Like the pattern is filled in, and then the fillet, the, this this mesh is um, left out, and you can make different kinds of patterns with it. Um, I think it's it's important to learn that because you can make a lot of really cute um, dish cloths with this these kinds of patterns. So here we have a cable stitch. She calls this the cabbage patch. We've got cross double, cross bill, cross lace loop, <laughs> hot cross bun. <laughs> so got a lot of got a lot of crosses here, zeros and crosses. Oh, look at that! Isn't that pretty? Here, I've got to I've got to zoom in on this one. Oops, I always go the wrong way first. Have you guys noticed that? Here we go. The woven shell. Isn't that pretty? It's at least a unique. <laughs> I like the way that looks. Okay, back out. Don't want to have any issues with copyright infringement. <laughs> uh, so we've got some little pyramids, inverted triangles. She's calling this a cross hatch stitch. That's, that's really pretty in those colors, I think. 
We've got the flying shells, the wedge stitch, which is also a kind of a triangle looking thing. Um, the side saddle cluster and the side saddle shell. And then she's got some chevron stitches and I believe this goes on for a little while. Um, so we've got the chevron, the close chevron, simple chevron, the wide chevrons. I, I typically tend to call these like rounded chevrons rather than like chevrons. That's, that's typically how I do. And some people call them waves. Um, so sharp chevron, ridged chevron, ribbed, raised. <laughs> this bobble chevron. I actually really like that idea. Um, peephole chevron and this granny chevron I am definitely going to include um, yeah I'm definitely going to include a tutorial for this because I have a playlist it's called um, granny square variations and it teaches all sorts of different ways to make granny like this kind of granny square stitch um, in ways that you don't necessarily have to start in the middle like for example the granny stripe stitch can go back and forth and I have that one on there um, so I'm definitely going to be doing this granny chevron stitch on the channel so here she's calling this one a wave um, a puff stitch wave and she's calling this a smooth wave oh yeah I've seen people call these wave stitches before so then this would be the textured wave and this would be the long wave so yeah I've seen wave stitches done this way as well so again that's just like right case in point how just in one turning of the page I could be like oh yeah I remember some people call it that so that's how that's how that happens now this is a really interesting wave and chevron stitch um, I appreciate the design um, but the, all the colors kind of run together for me um, so here are some techniques that you can use to add beads and um, I haven't gotten to the point in crochet where I want to add beads and I don't know if I ever will but um, if you want to learn how to add beads to your crochet this book does have a little bit about that um, and different ways of doing it that's something that um, I might teach on the channel in five years <laughs> it's not something that I'm um, interested in learning or doing anytime soon um, so yeah, so <laughs> you know how I said that the eyelash stitch freaked me out? This one actually really does freak me out. Like, I mean, like for real, it really freaks me out. I'm not able to look at this without being freaked out. Um, and I think it's because, um, as a lot of you know, I, am, I was a psychology major in college and I did a lot of biological psychology. Babies come up here to talk to us. Are you going to say hi? You see, baby's just walking on the table. It's like, no, just leaving my cat hair everywhere just in case you needed that. What you smelling? You smelling that light? Yeah, he, I think that he's, I think that he's just exploring. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Let's, let's get you off. Let's get you off this table. Come on, honey. Come on. I'm not going to push you. Here, yeah, you can sit right there as long as you don't get in the way. Yeah. Oh, baby. <laughs> he's so funny. He's just, he's really interested in my, um, lights that I have on right now for um for, for this so yeah so these large ruffles they look like brains to me um I took a lot of biological psychology classes because I majored in um sci a science degree rather than the arts degree so I learned like all the research and the statistics you know all the boring stuff I guess <laughs> but my, my dad was a scientist so it ran in the family um so yeah these large ruffles just remind me of a brain so <laughs> it's it's like I, I love brains but not while I'm crocheting we have these small ruffles okay so I really love this surface crochet over where you crochet over something to create that embroidery instead of embroidering and she's um, shows techniques to do that which I think is helpful and here we are with the symbols and the abbreviations again um, so yeah we've got all of the basic stitches and their symbols um and like i said this might be a really great book to learn symbols with just because as you're learning different stitches it has a symbol that's right underneath where you're learning so you kind of pick that up maybe even without meaning to so it does have that um she also has the common abbreviations which can be very helpful um and she also has the american English equivalent terms are basically American English versus British English. Um, 
equivalent terms and the index. So this is the crochet stitch dictionary. So overall, I would actually give this more like a 3.5 to 4 star for me personally, because I've already learned a lot of these stitches myself. Um, and for, I mean, this is advertised as a crochet stitch dictionary, right? So it's definitely got a really wide array of stitches and it's got a wide array of beginner stitches, of course. Um, but when I think of a crochet stitch dictionary, I think of going a lot farther than just this. Um, that is definitely not a criticism of this book. I'm just saying that um, for me, I'm looking for something that has like 500 stitches, you know, that kind of thing. So yeah, this crochet stitch dic dictionary, I would definitely recommend it to a beginner very easily. Um, it definitely has a lot of really um, uh, vivid pictures and she does the homework on every single stitch as far as making sure you've got the the um, written pattern, the visual, and also um, the the symbol. Okay, so, so I like that. And it's sturdy and I can definitely understand why Amazon recommends this. Um, if you are looking for a cro crochet stitch dictionary that's a little bit bigger, um, I would suggest the complete book of crochet stitch designs. Um, although I believe there's one that has come out recently that has even more stitches in it. So I'm definitely looking looking to get that. The the only other stitches stitch dictionaries that I have are out of print and um, there's a there's a few that have been published that, that are really good but they're out of print and so I don't I don't um, I, I want to make sure that what I review here is something you can actually purchase. That said thank you so much for watching this video to the end and looking through this crochet stitch dictionary with me. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that it has helped you inform decisions about um, whether or not you should purchase this or um, just given you an idea of some of the different um, stitch tutorials I will be doing in the future on this channel. I look forward to seeing you again. Don't forget to like and subscribe, share if you think somebody would be interested in this. Um, know that I have some giveaways going on, so make sure you find those giveaways and watch them and figure out how to enter. And uh, I will see you soon with another video. Bye for now.